Hey everyone, it's Alexi here from Astro Art, and today I'm going to use my big 8 inch Mi telescope for photographing the moon up close. This is my first time using this heavy duty setup, so I hope that everything will go as planned. And if everything goes as planned, I should get the best image of the moon I have ever captured. If you are an astrophotographer who likes to capture deep sky objects, you are probably familiar with the moon and how it affects in the sky conditions. Especially when the moon face is big and it gets high in the sky. In deep sky astrophotography, the moon can be annoying and frustrating. But on the other hand, when you get interested in photographing the moon itself, you just can't wait for the moon to get high in the sky. That is what happened to me. If you have ever looked at the moon through binoculars or even through a telescope, you just get this unreal feeling that is hard to explain. This type of stuff is something you have to experience in your life. Observe or photograph all the surface details and craters. It's like you are looking into different worlds. The moon is currently about 40% illuminated and that means the sun's light is hitting the side of the moon in our point of view. It will create contrast to the surface of the moon and it allows us to see craters in great detail and depth. The full moon is unique and beautiful, but if you want to observe or photograph close-up details, it is best to do it when the moon is not fully illuminated. One major thing that affects the seeing quality is how high the moon is in the sky. The higher the moon is, the less it's affected by atmospheric turbulence. So if you are looking to get the sharpest image possible, it's better to wait for the moon to rise high in the sky. When I capture photos of deep sky objects, I use a wide field refractor. But for the surface of the moon, I'm going to need a lot more reach. Today I'll use my biggest telescope to take a photo of the surface of the moon. The 8-inch Schmidt is a schmidt cassegrain telescope. schmidt cassegrain telescopes are specialized to deliver long focal length in short package, so you don't need to carry a 2-meter long telescope in your yard. This isn't the biggest schmidt cassegrain telescope, but it has a plenty of reach. It has a focal length of 2,000 millimeters. It has an aperture of 8 inches or 203 millimeters and these specs offers amazing views to the solar system. The camera that I have attached to the telescope is the ZWO ASI 174mm. It's a monochrome camera that is meant for solar system imaging. The image will be black and white, but that is no issue for me because the moon appears to be black and white. You can take a color images of the moon and crank that saturation up to pull out the colors, but that is something I'm not planning to do on this session. This camera can shoot fast FPS videos, which is exactly what we want. So rather than taking one picture of the moon, I am going to take a fast frame rate video, and that is important for the type of imaging we are doing. But I'll get to that in a second. Note that the more we have magnification, the faster objects move out of the frame. That's why it's best to use a mount that can track the sky and it will keep the object centered in the frame. This is a relatively heavy telescope, at least for what I'm used to, so it will need a high payload capacity mount. The mount I'm using is the iOptron GEM45. This is a robust and sturdy mount and it has a maximum payload capacity of 20 kilograms, which is more than enough for this telescope. I love the iOptron series as they have spring-loaded warm gear. 
zero backlash in the system. My plan for this session is to take fast frame rate video of the moon, then select the best frames and stack them. This way we can avoid stacking blurry frames caused by the atmosphere. That is called lucky imaging. Good seeing is also critical so we can get a sharp image. I am going to use the ASI Air Plus to capture my video files. Probably the absolute best way to capture high frame rate videos is to use laptop with softwares installed on it. But this kind of imaging is new to me and for the convenience I'm going to stick with the ASI Air Plus. This is also an interesting test to see how the ASI Air Plus performs in lunar imaging. Currently the sun hasn't set yet so I'll probably wait a little bit to get darker in here so the moon will separate better from the background sky.